Here at Kentucky Tennessee Living, we strive to keep this site non-political in nature. All historical events posted are those that change the lives of future generations, as well as we remember those who fought on both sides of the Civil War. All events posted are for the benefit of remembering who we are as the American Appalachian people. Between the years of April 12, 1861 and May 9, 1865, the war between the states raged. The peace of the Appalachian Mountains was broken as brother took up arms against brother. Several battles were won and lost in the area of Letcher County, and we will try to cover as many of them as possible. We will begin with the life of James Abram Garfield. He was born on November 19, 1831 in Moreland Hills, Ohio. He was the youngest of five children born to Abram and Eliza Ballou Garfield. Abram was a wrestler who died when James was only 18 months of age. Because James' father had passed away when he was at a young age, he received a basic education in his village school. At the age of 16, James became a seaman for six weeks as a canal driver in the Cleveland, Ohio area. From 1848 to 1850, he attended the Geauga Seminary in Chester, Ohio, and learned many academic subjects while there. To pay for his school, he worked as a janitor, bell ringer, and carpenter. In 1849, he became a teacher. While there, he met his wife, Lucretia Rodolph, whom he later married, and together they would have seven children. James then moved to Hiram, Ohio, to attend the Western Reserve Eclectic Institute, which later became Hiram College from 1851 through 1854. During his time in Hiram, Garfield became a preacher and had regular preaching circuits in the neighborhood churches. Later in 1854, Williams then enrolled at Williams College in Williamstown, Massachusetts. At Williams College, he received his Bachelor's of Arts degree in 1856. Garfield then returned to the Eclectic Institute where he taught classes in languages for the academic year of 1856 through 1857. He was then made principal of the school from 1857 through 1860. In 1859, Garfield was elected as a Republican member of the Ohio State Senate. He opposed Confederate secession from the United States and took up the anti-slavery cause. He served for the Ohio State Senate until 1861. He also began to study law in 1859 and was admitted into the Ohio Bar in 1861. Garfield was then elected to represent Ohio's 19th District for the Congress of 1861. He supported the gold standard for the transactions of money. While in Congress, he gained a reputation as a skilled orator. April 12, 1861, the Civil War broke out in the United States. Garfield received a commission as Lieutenant Colonel in the Union Army. Garfield would command the 42nd Ohio Volunteer Infantry. In November of 1861, Garfield was then given command of the 18th Brigade that was under the Brigadier General Don Carlos Buell. He would participate in skirmishes against the Confederate forces that were in Kentucky. On January 6, 1862, General Humphrey Marshall and his troops were stationed in Paintsville, Kentucky. There he would be confronted in battle by James A. Garfield. At that time, Garfield would be in command of the 42nd Ohio Brigade, which also included the 40th Ohio Infantry, two Kentucky Infantry Regiments, and two cavalry units. The fighting did not go well for Marshall, as Garfield's Federal Cavalry chased off the cavalry from Marshall's troops to the forks of Middle Creek, two miles from Prestonsburg, Kentucky. On January 9th, the two armies met again, and Marshall again withdrew his troops after a day of fighting. General Humphrey Marshall had his troops vacate their trenches at Hager Hill and marched his four regiments up the Prestonsburg Road to the mouth of Abbott Creek, 
which intersected with Pound Gap Road at that point. Marshall used this point to station his troops. Because Garfield was pursuing him from Paintsville, Marshall had received intelligence that Craner's 40th Ohio was moving east to Licking Station to reinforce Garfield. He was in a perfect position to intercept either of these forces before they had the chance to combine against him. Approximately 800 Union troops under Brigadier General James A. Garfield marched through the deep snow used squirrel trails from Pikeville, then Piketon, to outflank and surprise the 500 or more Confederate state troops under Major John B. Thompson. The fight lasted less than 20 minutes and the rebels fled leaving everything behind them. General Garfield then burned several buildings to prevent Confederates from taking back their camp. There was once a southern army camp consisting of 71 log buildings to hold the area. Garfield then had troops camp out for two weeks where the Jenkins post office now stands. He ordered that the 71 buildings be taken captive and the buildings be burned down. Then he left a small regiment to guard the area. This is one of the few mistakes that he made during this war. General James Hunt Morgan of the Morgan's Raiders later came through this area and met no resistance as they overtook the area once more. In recognition of the success of the battles and the overtaking of the area, Garfield was promoted to Brigadier General. After the retreat of Marshall, Garfield was the remaining force in eastern Kentucky and announced that all who fought for the Confederacy would be granted amnesty if they returned to their homes. The last of the Confederates left the area and retreated to Virginia. Garfield would now command the 20th Brigade of the Union Army of the Ohio in early 1862. He was then ordered to join General Ulysses S. Grant's forces as they advanced on Corinth, Mississippi. Before arriving, the forces under General Albert Sidney Johnston surprised Grant's men driving them back. Garfield and his men quickly joined up with Grant and the Battle of Shiloh began, which was one of the bloodiest battles of the Civil War. The Battle of Shiloh was won for the Union forces. After the Battle of Shiloh, Garfield became sick with jaundice and had to return home. After he recovered, he went to Washington to get a new assignment. He was then assigned as Chief of Staff to Major General William S. Rosecrans. Together they formed the Tullahoma Campaign to trap Confederate General Braxton Bragg in Tullahoma. After the skirmish, Bragg retreated to Chattanooga. Rosecrans stalled his men for reinforcements and supplies before chasing down Bragg. Garfield advised against this and with the meeting of the Council of War, it was agreed that they would go on the attack. September 19th through the 20th of 1863, confusion over orders that Rosecrans was giving caused gaps in the Union lines, resulting in great losses. Rosecrans fell back to Chattanooga and reformed a defensive line. Garfield disagreed with this and, with Rosecrans' approval, headed across the Missionary Ridge to survey the damages. Garfield then sent a telegram to the Secretary of War, Edward M. Stanton, for reinforcements. 20,000 troops arrived by train nine days later to give reinforcements to the Union line. Grant was then sent to replace Rosecrans, and Garfield was sent back to Washington, D.C. There, Garfield was promoted to Major General. Early in 1862, Garfield was approached to run for the Republican 19th District Congress ticket. While he was still in the Army, Garfield did not actively campaign for this seat, but others did so in his name. During the October 1862 general election, Garfield defeated D.B. Woods by a two-to-one margin for the seat. After speaking to President Abraham Lincoln about the matter, Garfield kept his seat in the House and resigned his commission in the Army. Garfield became a member of the U.S. House of Representatives from the Ohio's 19th District from March 4, 1863 through November 8, 1880. During his stay in the House, Garfield sat on the House Appropriations Committee from March 4, 1871 through March 4, 1875. Garfield then ran for and won President of the United States and was sworn into office on March 4, 1881. 
he became the 20th president. On July 2, 1881, a disappointed office seeker by the name of Charles J. Guiteau met Garfield at the Baltimore and Potomac Railroad Station in Washington, D.C., and shot him. Though the wound was not fatal, it set up infections from his doctor's care. President James Abram Garfield died on September 19, 1881, just six months after he was sworn into office. Garfield would become the second U.S. president to die in office by assassination. Thank you for watching our video about John Abram Garfield. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we bring to you the history of the Appalachian Mountains. Please like, subscribe, and share below. Also hit the bell for notifications of future videos. And once again, be sure to leave us a hey y'all in the comments section below. Thank you for continuing to support us and watch our videos.